Good. Right? What happens if that happens? Can I make these cases? And the answer is, what do you think? Not in general. If n is greater than 30, here's what's, what's kind of nice, what's really nice, what's very important for you. If n is greater than 30, I told you this is going to be an automatic truth. No matter what your population looks like, this will happen. Nudge, have you agree? Have you with me on that? No matter what, if that happens, this stuff happens. You got it? If this doesn't happen, we have to make another claim. We have to make another claim. You have to actually say something about the population. You see, here I said nothing about the population at all. I didn't tell you where it came from, did I? I said, you're just sampling from a group of people. Who cares? It could be a U shape. That's the opposite of a normal distribution. could look like that. Yet this is going to happen. The sampling distribution will be normal. Now, if I tell you this, I've got to say something about the population to make this stuff work. I've got to tell you that for this stuff to work, if your sample size is less than 30, your sample has to come from a population that is normally distributed. You with me? It's got to be normally distributed. If you're sampling from a normal distribution, the sampling distribution of sample means will still be normally distributed. If, it, if the population is normal, it should make sense that the samples are going to be normal when put in a distribution. Do you follow that logic? If the population is already normal, I take samples, no matter what the sample size is, organize them in the, in the chart after I find each of those statistics, you're going to get a nice bell-shaped curve again if it's coming from a, nor a normally distributed population. If the sample size is greater than 30, it doesn't matter. If it's less than 30, you have to have that statement. So if n is less than or equal to 30, and I tell you specifically the population is normally distributed. Here's what's true. The sampling distribution of sample means will also be normally distributed. The sampling distribution normal of several means is also normally distributed, and the same stuff will hold. It says the average of all those sample means, even though the sample size isn't isn't more than 30, it came from a population that's normally distributed. The, the average of all those sample means is going to equal the population mean, and again, the standard deviation of those sample means will equal the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. It'll still hold. Same exact knowledge. You guys see it? Look at the board with me. Do you guys see that this is the same exact statement? Except that one more thing has to happen here. Look at the board with me. Follow me along before you start writing this. If n's bigger than 30, no problem whatsoever. You don't even have to read more on the problem. You know this stuff is going to work. Now, if you're okay with that. If n's less than or equal to 30, you have to keep reading. If it says population is normally distributed, can you do this stuff? Yes. No problem. No problem. Then everything works. Same exact stuff. Nothing's going to change here whether you have a sample size bigger than 30 or less than 30. The difference is if it's bigger than 30, everything works no matter what, no matter what the population looks like. If it's less than or equal to 30, it does matter what the population looks like. It's got to be normally distributed for this stuff to work. Are you okay with that? Have you thought of the last case? There's a case three. What's the case three? I've had n bigger than 30, everything works. I've had n less than or equal to 30, but we have a condition. What's the last case, do you think? 
Flynn? Okay. I heard lots of. No, 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 no. I don't know. I'm going to move my mouth so you can't really hear me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what happens if n is less than or equal to 30 <coughs> and you know nothing about your population? Uh, specifically about the distribution of your population. Notice that these are the only three cases you can have. This is it. You either have n's bigger than 30 or n's less than 30. If n's bigger than 30, no problems. No worries, mate. You got this. That's Australian, by the way. Did you like my accent? N's bigger than 30, no problem. You got this. If n's less than or equal to 30, you have two cases. One, if the population is normally distributed, no problem. Again, you got this. If the population is not normally distributed or you don't know anything about the population, this is actually going to be your favorite one. You know why? You can't do it. <laughs> Please give me 10 of those on the test. <laughs> you can't do it. Yeah. Okay, maybe not 10 of those on the test anymore. <laughs> yeah. This is why you have to understand this stuff. Okay, because this is gonna, it's gonna happen a lot. You're gonna have to tell the difference between something called a z-score, you know what z-score is, and a t-score. You don't know what t-score is. Right? And it depends on the difference between these two cases. Okay? If n's greater than 30, you use this stuff. This is, this is great. If n's less than or equal to 30, you have to choose between these. Right now, you can't even do this one. So right now, you live in these two worlds. N's greater than 30, great. N's less than or equal to 30, check the distribution. If it's normal, normal for the population, okay. If it's not, you can't do it right now. How many people understood what we've talked about so far today? Good, that was a whole lot of talking. I hope you understood it. If you're not, now's the time for questions. You guys have any of those questions? You look so sad. This is funny. <laughs> this right here, this whole stuff, this is the central limit theorem. This, this is it. It says that if a population's random variable x, so if your x has a mean of mu and a standard deviation of that, this just means that a mean exists and a standard deviation exists somewhere. The distribution of our sample means is going to be normally distributed, and this is going to take place. The average of our sample means and the standard deviation of our sample means is going to equal the population mean and the population standard deviation over the square root of our sample size, respectively. That's going to happen if n is greater than 30. That is the central limit theorem. Okay. It also continues to go on and say if that doesn't take place and you know the population is normal, that's still, this is still true. Same exact information. It also continues to say if it doesn't, well, you fail these two cases then and you can't use this section. Just a couple little notes um, on, on the notation. This right here, just so you, you can read through this again and kind of understand what we're doing. The average of sample means, the average of sample means. Sample mean, what was the symbol for sample mean that we had? What was that, Jan? What was the average? What was the sample means? What's the, the symbol that we have for that? The, just the sample mean itself. When we do the sample mean, get into class, first chapter. Just x bar. If we take the average of all of our sample means, and average looks like that, that's how we're getting u x bar. Okay. So when you see this. This is the average of sample means. That's what that means. That's what, what we have already explained to you. I just want to make sure you see it again so you have that. 
the standard deviation of sample means. Again, sample means is x bar. Standard deviation is canon sigma. Yeah. The standard deviation of sample means, that's this one. <coughs> this says the standard deviation of your sample means. That's where the symbols are coming from. It kind of tells you what they are. Standard deviation of sample means, we know it's this thing. Mean of our sample means, we know it's that thing. By the way, this that's always true, you always have that. And this is also true. This, by the way, is often called the standard error. So if you ever hear of the standard error, if your homework problem asks you, find the standard error. This is what it means, okay? That's the standard error. Also called the standard error. How many people feel they understand this stuff and are ready to move on to the next little segment? Make a jump. Do you understand the, the stuff before we make the jump? For me to jump into hyperspace. Uh, Star Wars, anybody? <laughs> Did you get this? Hyperspace is Star Trek? Man, I'm not dorky enough yet. Darn it. i got to really learn my, my space. Isn't it both? Yes. I don't know. I thought warp drive was Star Trek, but you know. Uh, I don't know. All right. Okay. Okay, Han Solo. Here we go. Wait, no, it's Captain Kirk. Whatever. Beam me up, Scotty. Did you get this? Greater than 30, no problem. This, less than 30, if it's normally distributed, no problem. This, can't do it. This is our, our notation. Let's make the jump. In the previous sections, well, besides 6.4, where you really didn't know actual mathematics, um, in the previous section before that, 6.2 and 6.3, what we did is we found the z-score for individual pieces of data. What was the z-score for an individual piece of data? How do you find it? You tell me the formula you should have it memorized by now. You should have it memorized by now. Or in other words, x minus mu over that sigma. Yes? You've been do hopefully you know that. You've been doing that for a while. This was for an individual data value, for an x. For an individual data value, that's our, our x. What this section allows you to do is to take a sample and work with a sample. You see, the problem is the problem is this, folks. You ready for the problem in statistics? The problem in statistics.